the left has decided to full scale embrace socialism, which is deeply exciting. So Bernie is coming out and he's saying, listen, my radical ideas have now been embraced by the base of the party. And this, of course, is exactly right. Those ideas that we talked about here in Iowa four years ago that seemed so radical at that time. Well, today, virtually all of those ideas are supported by a majority of the American people. And they are ideas that Democratic presidential candidates are running on today. Okay, so, you know, he is right about this. The fact is that because we live in a time where people are disconnected from the actual impacts of socialism, very few people in the United States have ever lived under socialism. It's very easy to re-embrace bad ideas because nobody ever sees the price tag. One of the beautiful things about being Bernie Sanders and being a socialist in general in the United States is you get to point to programs in other countries and say, we ought to do that. And then when people ask, how do you pay for that? You go, it'll pay for itself, which is the same thing you hear in timeshare presentations. And it is not true. Whenever somebody says, you know what? Forget about the price tag. It's going to pay for itself. Check your wallet because I'm sure it is gone. And somebody is already buying stolen VCRs from the back of a truck with it. Okay, that is the way socialism tends to work. Well, it's not just Bernie Sanders embracing this stuff. It is the mayor of New York. So Bill de Blasio tweeted out over the weekend, brothers and sisters, there is plenty of money in this country. There's plenty of money in this world. It's just in the wrong hands. Yes, I would like all the money to be in the hands of a man who has never done anything for his entire life, Bill de Blasio. I also love the brothers and sisters. Comraden, comrades, if we just, we are this far from an omelet, all we have to do is break a few eggs. Got to get rid of the kulaks. They have all the money. Once we take the money, it'll be all better. By the way, worth noting, New York City is bankrupt. So that's sad. So his own city is essentially bankrupt at this point, And he's got nothing to say about that, except that he wants to take more money from rich people, which, of course, is not going to work. Even New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has says we can't we can't raise taxes on the rich people anymore in this state. They're all leaving and going to Florida, including, by the way, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez's mom, who said she moved down to Florida because there was less property tax. Well, one of the lead proponents of this nonsense is, of course, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez who says the same dumb stuff as Bernie Sanders, but is younger and more attractive and snaps her fingers in a Z formation. In any case, AOC, she was speaking at South by Southwest, and she said, if you don't have a job, you are left to die under capitalism. That's what socialism means, not leaving people to die, which is weird since socialism killed over 100 million people in the last century and is killing a bunch of people in Venezuela right this instant. But apparently under AOC, if you don't have a job under capitalism, you are left to die should not be haunted by the specter of being automated out of work, right? We should be excited by that. But the reason we're not excited by it is because we live in a society where if you don't have a job, you are left to die. And that is at its core our problem. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, you're right. She's the first person ever to discover that leaving people to die is bad. Which is weird since, again, socialism routinely leaves people to die. Mass exterminations under socialism have not been rare, it turns out. Dissidents are still in jail in Cuba. People in Venezuela, as I mentioned, starving to death. China eradicated some 40 million of its own citizens. The Soviet Union routinely gulagged political opponents and also killed a bunch of people in the Ukraine in the 1930s. So socialism basically has been a party. The notion that socialism is just wonderful for human lives, that they are seeking to preserve every human life, and that if you don't have a job, you're left to die under capitalism. It's just absurd. First of all, capitalism has been responsible for more people rising from extreme poverty than any force in the history of humanity. Look at world GDP since the implementation of free markets. And what you will see is a straight line up. It's exponential growth in world GDP since the implementation of free markets. When it came to top down control of markets via government, you don't even have to go back to the socialist past to see how much that has failed. That was the rule, not the exception, in virtually all human societies up till about 1800. And then we started thinking, hey, wait, what if we left individuals to pursue their own economic decisions in peace? And world GDP exploded. It is also amazing to me how folks on the left so often conflate government action with kindness. I mean, I don't know how much AOC gives in charity. I do know that people who tend to vote socialist give less charity than people who tend to vote Republican because Republicans tend to be religious. And that means that we spend a lot of our money on charity. We give tens of thousands of dollars, I mean, literally per person in many cases, 
to charity. If, if you just look at the studies, people in red states give more charity than people in blue states. People who are religious give more charity than people who are non-religious. People who vote Republican give more charity than people who vote Democrat. These are just well-established facts. The conflation of government action with helping the poor is truly perverse. The fact is that over the long span of history, including in modern history, the first place that religious people go when it comes to hard times is their religious community. Capitalism does not bar you from being part of a social institution that helps pick up the slack. Government grabbing all the resources and getting rid of the profit incentive, which is what AOC wants to do. She doesn't just want to redistribute the gains. She wants to get rid of the profit incentive entirely, as we'll see. That generates enormous poverty. That's not about helping the poor. It's about dragging everybody through the mud, including the entire economy. When people say, are you a socialist? And people say, if by socialism you mean unicorns in a meadow filled with gumdrops. And you're like, no, that's not what I meant. I meant nationalization of industry, abolition of the profit motive and generalized poverty. When they say, if by socialism you mean, and then say a lot of good things, they don't know what socialism is. AOC doesn't actually know what socialism is because she's lived in a capitalist country her whole life. I mean, it's, it's so funny to me that she talks about people who lack privilege in American society. She went to Boston University. She got a degree in econ and learned zero things. And then she bartended. And at 29, she went straight to Congress. Does that sound like a life where you lack privilege, where things are real rough for you? How does she think things would have gone for her if she'd been living in Cuba or Venezuela or China or Vietnam? Does she think things would have been lots better for her, you know, in socialist countries? Anyway, AOC says capitalism is irredeemable. This is maybe the most pathetic stupid, ignorant statement of, I don't know, at least the last 48 hours because stupidity is running real high these days. Here's AOC calling capitalism irredeemable. You know, the system that has raised virtually everyone on the globe from abject poverty. There's been an 80% decline in the world's worst poverty since 1980. But according to AOC, capitalism is irredeemable. Capitalism isn't, to me, is, it's an ideology of capital. It puts capital, the most important thing is the concentration of capital. And it means that we seek and prioritize profit and the accumulation of money above all else. And we seek it at any human and environmental cost. That is what that means. And to me, that ideology is not sustainable and cannot be redeemed. Okay, that is not, <laughs> what is she even talking about? That is not what capitalism suggests. Capitalism does not suggest that profit by destroying other people is okay. That's not what free markets are. You don't get to violate the rights of other people. For example, you know, it's not capitalism. Me and my friends voting to steal your money, kill you, and then use your money for what we want. According to AOC's description of capitalism, that fits right in, right? I'm maximizing my own personal profit at cost to you. That's not what capitalism is. Free markets are about the idea that you as an individual have innate value given to you by God, that I as an individual have innate value, and that in recognition of each other's innate value, we own our own labor and creativity, and that we can trade our labor to one another for additional benefit to ourselves, and that we have a right to accrue profit based on our voluntary exchanges with other people. That's what capitalism and free markets are. When you mischaracterize capitalism as socialism, it's real easy to fall in love with socialism. It's truly incredible. And, and then it's hilarious. She describes what she thinks capitalism is. And everything that she describes is actually an aspect of corporatism, of a perversion of free markets. So she says, you know what's real bad about capitalism is that corporations have taken over our government. Just as there's all this fear mongering that government is gonna take over every corporation and government is gonna take over every business or every form of production, um, we should be scared right now because corporations have taken over our government. Okay, corporations have taken over our government. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so her proposal is that corporations should not take over government. I agree. Okay, corporations should not take over government. You know what? That's an aspect of corporatism, top down government control. When the government has too much power, corporations try to grasp at the government's power. You know what also is not a solution? government taking over corporations. In both cases, you are talking about small groups of people who are now controlling the entire system on behalf of themselves. But she doesn't see this because once again, it is easy to be a socialist when you never actually have to imbibe the cost. And now AOC's foolishness doesn't stop there. And the reason we spend so much time on this is because AOC really is, in the same way that Donald Trump is the id of sort of populist nationalism, he says whatever comes to mind. AOC is the id 
of the socialist push in the United States. And that id has about as much brains as my two-year-old son sticking his finger repeatedly into the light socket and then declaring himself a light bulb. This is really dumb stuff. Okay, so let's continue. AOC is talking about how real capitalism is about corporate exploitation. That is not what capitalism is about. And then she suggests, you know what solve all of this? If we taxed corporation at 90% so people can sit around writing poetry. People who are able to fulfill their deepest aspirations, like finger painting. One thing she doesn't seem to understand. Who's going to work for the corporation if the corporation makes no profit, thereby providing the pay for people to do useless crap like write poetry that she reads? Bill Gates has talked about taxing robots at 90%. And what that means, what he's really talking about, is taxing corporations at 90%. And we should be excited about automation because what it, what it could potentially mean is more time educating ourselves, more time creating art, more time investing and investigating in the sciences, more time focused on invention, more time uh, going to space, more time enjoying the world that we live in. What is she talking about? about. What is she even, t- more time going to space? On what? On what? More time doing scientific inventions, right? Because what we need is, pe- that's the unemployed are typically where all the best inventions come from. That's, that's usually where it happens, right? You just quit your job and then you go in the back room and you tinker around like you're on Nickelodeon with Bill Nye or something. That's when you come up with the greatest inventions. Greatest inventions are not made by people, you know, employed by universities or, or who are working for some sort of R&D department. The greatest inventions are made by unemployed people in their basements. Historically, like Dr. Frankenstein, for example, unemployed guy in his basement, made an awesome, you know, person out of different body parts. Unemployed, what if that guy had had to work? Would he have ever made an animate monster? No, he would not have. And then would the world have been worse off? You bet. You bet. And what is she, going to space? Wait, does she think people go home and they just build a rocket in their backyard? You think Elon Musk just goes home and builds a rocket in his backyard? Or does it take billions of dollars to build those programs? I mean, legitimately, the insane ignorance of this human being being touted as a genius. And she says, oh, let's tax corporations at 90%. Okay, if we tax corporations at 90%, you think they're going to maintain the same employment base? Do you really think they're not just going to fire people? Or do you think that maybe they will organize in a different way without filing as an LLC, for example? They'll just file as an individual. And then you'll get conglomerations of individuals who all just divvy up the money as it comes in to avoid the legal ramifications of filing as a corporation. Oh, the level of stupid. Finally, she finishes up with her her real proposal. The real proposal of the socialists is is that America is no good, very bad, terrible, Alexander's horrible, no good, very bad day. That That is AOC's characterization of the United States. America is garbage. She actually says this. America is garbage. This... This beneficiary of the greatest, freest, most democratic system ever created by human minds, this human being is suggesting that America is garbage. As she sits there, having been useless virtually her entire life, now being championed at South by Southwest, she was more useful when she was bartending. At least she was providing a good or service somebody wanted. Now she's providing a good or service nobody wants at taxpayer expense. I think all of these things sound radical compared to where we are, but where we are is not a good thing. And this idea of like 10% better from garbage is shouldn't be what we settle for. It's like this, like, it feels like moderate is not a stance. It's just an attitude toward life of like, "Mm." (laughs) Oh, dream big, guys. Dream big. America's garbage. We have full employment by economic statistics, but America's garbage. She's sitting there at a conference for losers and getting paid for it, presumably, or her campaign is. And she's sitting there in presumably a nice set of clothing, which is great. Everybody should have nice clothing and a nice chair with a microphone, making Instagram videos with her instant pot that she got on Amazon, a capitalist corporation. After taking Uber, a capitalist corporation, using sweet potatoes provided by a capitalist corporation, on a camera provided by a capitalist corporation to people who are consuming it from their homes, which they paid for with money earned from a capitalist corporation. But America's garbage, guys. America's garbage. Now, what's hilarious about this is you have to have not visited or learned or read a book. or You know how sheltered you have to be to believe that America's garbage? Truly sheltered. You know how privileged you have to be to believe that America in 2019 is garbage? You are the most privileged person in the history of humanity to be living in this time, in this place. If people were dropped into America 2019 from 1800, they would literally think they had died and gone to heaven. 
As of 1900, one in every 10 babies died in infancy. As of 1850, the average life expectancy in Europe was 36.2 years. The average life expectancy is over 80. No one is dying of starvation. Obesity is more of an epidemic among the poor in the United States than starvation is, and it ain't close. We have more of a problem of our poor people dying of heart attacks from being overweight than of dying from starvation. Yet America is garbage. The utter ingratitude of this perspective is truly astonishing and the mischaracterization of free markets and the attempt to paint socialism as some sort of boon for humanity's good side, as opposed to the collective simply trumping the individual, which is the root of socialism. The root of socialism is that individuals don't have power over their labor, that individuals don't have power over their creativity, that the only way for us to to ensure that human powers of flourishing can break free is by collectivizing everything and then redistributing it so that some of us can finger paint while others of us have a gun pointed to our head at the behest of the federal government. If that sounds great to you, then by all means, join the socialist revolution of AOC and Bernie Sanders. My goodness.